thank you bartha can you get someone can you Angela get the next... calling from university place washington thank you Yeah, good morning, good evening. And my people, this vein, I'm coming from Kenya. Thank you, Vin. Could you get the next person? Yeah, good morning. This is Samuel calling from Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I see Fidel, right? Fidel, hi. Fidel. Okay. Uh, can you mute? Can you unmute? You are muted, please. Me? Are you able to hear me? No, I'm saying Fidel. Fidel. I'm yeah. Just yeah, but I don't think I don't think he's he's able. To, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, it's okay. Um. So today we are going to have um uh, uh Mark presenting as uh something um conducted i mean hosting this this i'm um, not hosting of course he's going to be a speaker of the day uh so mark is based in uh, kentucky he's um a professional in this field in data analyt analytics so i will allow him to take over the session and then i will be able to just say a word and then we are going to have a student current one of the current student saying vote of thanks and then we end this so we intend to do this thing within um, at least one hour. So, Mark, welcome and uh, take over the session. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for creating time for this webinar tonight. I don't know where you are logging in from, uh, but right where I am, it's um, 10 minutes past midnight in Kentucky. So I'll share my screen. Uh, so hope you guys can see my screen. So I'll be taking you through tonight's presentation. My name is Mark Omondi. I'm a professional in uh, business analytics. We basically just play around with the data to help companies make decisions uh, that drive business forward. So that's what I'm going to take you through tonight. I'll make it as simple as possible. I, for those of you who are a bit scared about the technical bits like coding and that, we are not talking about that here. So it will be something that um, you can take home um, in whatever company that you work for, if you run a company or you are a professional in the marketing industry, you can use such information to make decisions. So this is what you should expect in this presentation. I'll just give you a brief introduction of um, uh, how data really can be used in uh, making decisions. And then I'll talk about the power of data. I'll also take you through how decisions are made uh, based on data. I'll also bring in the interesting aspect of artificial intelligence, which currently is really trending. 
I'm sure you guys have heard of chat GPT and, uh, and the rest. So that is also very essential in today's uh, modern marketing. I'll also tell you how um, marketing analytics, analytics can be used in uh, personalization and segmentation of uh, customers by companies. And then interestingly, I'll also bring in the aspect of predictive analytics. This is very interesting because it helps you to, or it helps companies to really predict uh, future customer behavior so that they are able to really prepare themselves for uh, future marketing strategies. And then we'll also look at the ethical issues surrounding uh, the use of data in, uh, in marketing. And uh, then eventually, for those of you who have questions, I'll open up uh, later on the floor for anyone who has questions. And then we should be able to close at that. So without wasting a lot of time, um, I'll start off by an interesting story about Ford as a company. I'm sure we all know who Ford is. It's an automaker. So way back in 1950s, um, I think sometime in 1957, they went ahead and launched a brand uh, called, they called it Ford Edsel. So this was a mistake in the first place because these guys went ahead and uh, designed a vehicle with certain features without really listening to what their customers at that point in time really wanted in a car. So they simply gathered a few um, internal uh, views, internal data. And then they thought probably based on what they had gathered um, as a company from the inside that their customers needed uh, certain features in a car which really was not the case. Customers wanted a different version of, um, of uh, cars. So they went ahead and launched this Ford Edsel. And the long story short, this car was sold as a premium car, uh, very expensive. And at that point in time, people really were yearning for low-end vehicles that would cost less. But Ford really didn't take time to understand that their customers really wanted low-end cars. So they just thought their gut feelings uh, would guide them into building a car. And the long story short, three years later, in 1960, uh, they stopped producing that brand simply because there was no demand at all. So this is a classic example of uh, how as a company, you can really make a very big mistake if you don't gather information from your customers uh, so you can really understand their preferences and their needs. And in the modern world, there is really a lot of data uh, that companies are gathering from different uh, platforms. So, that introduces you into this topic of today. So I was just giving you that story so you get to understand how really marketing analytics can play a very important role in uh, making certain decisions. It can be as simple as uh, simply gathering uh, data from clients, but if you ignore that, it can really cost you a fortune. For example, the case of Ford, they probably used millions and in 1950s uh, millions of dollars by that time was a lot of money but three years later that brand runs, runs uh, out of uh, market so i'll take you through how powerful data really is and the power of data cannot be underestimated in today's marketing landscape with the rise especially of uh, digital platforms and technologies. Business are accumulating huge amounts of data from their consumers. And a good example would uh, be Amazon. 
I'm sure some of you, especially those in the US, you must have used Amazon at some point. And Amazon collects millions of, it collects actually trillions of data from millions of transactions every single day. And it's from such data that uh, they are able to make certain personalized product recommendations and uh, and uh, <clears throat> and shopping ex improve shopping experiences for their clients. So, what companies also need to know that with this huge amount of data that is available, there comes certain challenges because this data, if it's not organized correctly, sometimes analysis becomes a challenge. And for us business analysts, what we are told is that um, the biggest challenge really is not analyzing data. The biggest challenge is organizing that data so that by the time you are analyzing it, you are able to make very accurate decisions that will be able to push business forward. And the language we use mostly is that 80% of what a data analyst really does is to organize data. It's only 20% of what they actually do that is channeled towards analyzing that data. So a classic example of how um, huge amounts of data can really be a problem again if not used correctly is uh, a case of, for example, the General Electric, for those of you who know. Eh? General Electric at some point really faced an issue of data silos. For some of you who are in this field, you probably might understand what data silos is. Data silos in simple terms is um, just a situation where a company is keeping data for different departments separately. For example, sales database is kept different from marketing database which is also kept separately from, say, production database. So at some point, General Electric was experiencing that. And it was an issue because if these databases are huge and kept separately, decision making can really be slow some, at, at, uh, at some point. And eventually, when they learned this was a problem, they had to synchronize these databases so that they can read from each other. And this improved uh, efficiency. So as much as data is important, uh, you really need to have the power to organize that data so that when you're making your decisions, it's streamlined and eventually it leads into productive uh, uh, energy. So it's it's really important that uh, when making decisions as a company, and this is very critical for CEOs running companies, uh, marketing managers, people in charge of marketing departments really need to understand that before they make their decisions, such decisions have to be backed by data. I think there is this, there is this um, very dangerous um, trend where certain companies just go ahead and make certain decisions purely based on guesswork. For example, a company might, might probably see that uh, right now a lot of companies are advertising through YouTube, for example. So without really collecting data and understanding whether their customers really are YouTube users, certain people, certain um, decision makers might just end up and channel their marketing budget towards uh, 
uh, YouTube without really understanding whether their customers really are the right ones uh, they are targeting. And that's where what I call DBD, data back decisions, comes into play. And informed decision making lies at the heart of successful marketing campaigns. So by embracing uh, data-driven strategies, business can make smarter decisions based on real insights instead of just uh, guesswork. Look at a company like Netflix. I'm sure most of us use Netflix. Uh, it just started the other day, but clearly it's, um, it's, uh, it's become a billion dollar company very fast. It's one of the leading streaming services. It leverages data analytics to analyze uh, user behavior and preferences. So when you are watching, whatever you are watching, whatever movies you are watching on Netflix, behind the scenes, Netflix is very busy gathering uh, data. And it's from that data that Netflix gathers that they are able to, to really release movies and, and um, certain products that really match your behavior as the user and your preferences. So by understanding what their viewers really like, they create personalized content recommendations, which eventually results in uh, increased user engagement and retention because they want you to remain glued to them as a service provider. So the best way to do that is to ensure that they give you what you really need or what you really want. And that can only happen if they gather data uh, based on your user behavior. Okay? So that's, that's a, a good example of how uh, really certain decisions are made by companies uh, based on data analytics. Now, coming to the subtopic of um, artificial intelligence, I would call it here a subtopic, but clearly with the current trend, it's, it's a major, it's a, it's a, it's a major, it's, it's a trending topic um, globally. Artificial intelligence has really taken over very many industries. And uh, marketing is uh, no exception. So AI has the ability to process uh, huge amounts of data very quickly and efficiently. So instead of just a human being um, analyzing data manually one by one, one by one, which, which takes time and can take a lot of energy and effort, artificial intelligence now comes in to do all that work, not just very efficiently, but very, very quickly. And that's why when I started off, I gave you the example of ChatGPT, which uh, most of us are, uh, are uh, familiar with right now. Just launched the other day, but clearly it has taken over uh, the world. And these are some of the things we are talking about uh, that really marketing departments and companies as a whole uh, really need to leverage on. So it's, it's an algorithms can uncover really very valuable insights that will be able to portray certain hidden trends. And it's based on these trends that uh, decision makers are able to make marketing decisions. Uh, based on. And I know I gave you already an example of Amazon. I'll, I'll use it again here. It sets an example with its AI powered uh, recommendation system that suggests products based on individual browsing and purchase history. 
So as you continue browsing and making purchases through Amazon, it's basically as um, AI algorithms that gather uh, data based on your behavior on their website, right? So it leverages on, on such behavior to help them unlock uh, new opportunities for their marketing. And this helps them, of course, to stay ahead of competition. So really in the modern world for any serious company, uh, any serious uh, marketing decision maker, for example, we are talking about uh, marketing managers, distribution managers, uh, even CEOs really need to understand this. They really need to take advantage of AI in helping to make some sense out of their data that they have. So um, AI has different tools, a couple of them, but uh, since I promised I will not make this uh, talk very technical, I'll just mention a few. And uh, one of them is natural language processing. Well, natural language processing is uh, basically, look at a, a company like uh, Airbnb. There are a lot of reviews that uh, customers leave behind comments um, after they using Airbnb, for example. So natural language processing, in short NLP, basically these are algorithms that are able to understand human language. So as you leave your comment in whatever language you leave, uh, in whatever platform you leave your comment or your reviews, what this does, um, it's able to pick that particular comment and convert it into computer language and then make meaning out of it. So it collects from customer A, it collects from customer B, customer C, customer Z, and all these forms a huge database. And it's through analyzing such database that a company is able to really uh, make certain decisions based on, on the outcome of uh, such analysis. And AI really plays an important role in this. So uh, an exemplary company utilizing uh, NLP uh, would be that Airbnb, and it uses it to analyze guest, guest reviews and uh, feedback to understand guest preferences so that they are able to uh, enhance their travel uh, experiences. There is also sentimental analysis. You know, when, when as a customer, when you're interacting with uh, a certain platform or you're buying from a certain company, uh, and trust you me, customers buy based on emotions. So there is some emotional attachment uh, when you're making certain purchasing decisions as a customer. And in business analytics, we, we have an aspect we call sentimental analysis. So sentimental analysis basically gauges the consumer emotions towards products and brands. For example, I'm sure right now if I mentioned Apple, if I just mentioned iPhone, for example, there is something that clicks into your mind. Because this company has been able to, to build certain emotions around that particular brand. So whoever interacts with that brand picks certain connotations from it. So that's what we refer to as sentimental analysis. So this is an AI-powered tool uh, that is able to understand 
consumer emotions toward certain products or certain brands. So through such tools, uh, companies really can be able to, to really stay ahead of the game in terms of their marketing uh, strategies, marketing positions, and I'll, 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 I'll restrict this conversation to marketing positions, but basically this application is very broad. Uh, remember, a company has different departments. So there is inventories, uh, all these things that we are talking about, analytics applies even in inventory management. So here we are strictly uh, confining it to marketing decision making, but essentially it's a lifesaver for most organizations. Excuse me, excuse me, Mark. Um, yes, please. Yeah. Um, so appreciate, appreciate, I'm appreciating, you know, how you're doing presentation. I'd like it from when you started on um, giving us example of Ford and the, the, the cars, and of course, even went to again talk about Amazon. Could you please make it clear? I'm not sure how the, the, the people attending are, uh, uh, you know, engaging you in terms of how you present this thing. Um, could you please just try to explain the relationship between data analytics and AI? How is AI coming in um, um, to support or to augment or, you know, to just try to explain that so that, you know, we can be able, it can, it can come out so clearly how AI and, and data analytics comes in, uh, married together. Yeah, thanks for that. And I think for anyone else, uh, if at some point you feel like something is not clear and you can't hold it until the last uh, session, just feel free to chip in the way he has done. So AI basically comes in to complement um, data analytics. You know, traditionally, data analytics has been done uh, manually by human beings, right? Um, and I'll give you an example even of uh, some of the things we, we, we do in industry. An organization gives you a database, for example, of their customers and uh, certain aspects of their customers. And then what you do, you are able to run, um, to come up with models, which you are able to use to analyze this data and then make certain recommendations out of that data as Mac. So you might use certain uh, softwares like R, for example, R software. Most data analysts use that. Others might use Python. There are those who might use Power BI, Tableau, and all that. So AI is a game changer in the sense that instead of um, uh, me as Mark or you as, just want to use someone, Susan, for example, instead of you sitting down for a whooping two days trying to make sense out of data by running certain softwares, AI uh, simply makes your work easier because you simply throw in whatever database you have and then it instantly, very quickly, and that's the game changer that we are talking about here. It's the same case with the uh, chat GPT that I was talking about. So instantly you're able to get recommendations from that database without taking too much time uh, manually doing it. I really don't know whether that answers your question. Yes, it does. Uh, you know, there's one thing I wanted to come out clearly to everyone who is present tonight, is that AI is not coming to take after your job. You just mentioned it helps you, gives it gives you recommendations. So it's you to make a decision. Okay. In our previous uh, webinar, we said that AI cannot think like human being. Okay. So AI uh, gives a suggestion based on previous experiences. So I think that is what I wanted to come out clear that it, it gives you recommendation. It helps you for a job that would take you normally two days 
then AI will be able to help you so that you can do it within hours. But does that not mean that you as a data analyst, you lose your job because AI is growing in the current era? Thank you. Yeah, and I think that's an important point to, to mention because uh, most people when they hear about AI, uh, the fear simply comes in that uh, AI is going to kick us out of our jobs. And it's an interesting conversation that we are talking with you, um, I think offside uh, two days ago. Uh, and you remember us uh, saying how AI, instead of taking away jobs, it's actually going to create a different version of jobs, right? So even though job X will go away, but AI will create job Y, uh, which needs certain skills from AI itself. So, so thank you for chipping in. Uh, I think it helps just to, to make the point sink in. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, so we were talking about personalization and segmentation. And, and this is, this is um, very, very important in marketing. As, as, as a company, it's especially the marketing departments, they would want to look at the products and services they are offering to their customers. So based on the way customers are behaving, these marketing de departments uh, are able to really do what, what we call segmentation. That's what we are calling segmentation, where a certain clique of uh, customers is put aside and had, handled differently or communicated differently. Uh, a certain group also communicated. And, and, and a good example would be sometimes you get, for example, emails of uh, offers or promotions. Mm -hmm. Like in my case, uh, when I was when I was in Kenya, I used to use um, a version of another version of Uber called Bolt. So randomly they would send me uh, emails of uh, a thirty percent discount, for example. And when I consulted with with uh, my friend who also uses who also used Bolt and ask them whether they have received the same discount, they would tell me they have not received such discount. Yet both of us are using the same uh, service. So that's, that's a, 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 a clear example of uh, segmentation. So you look at your customers, you are able to gauge the frequency within which they use your service. You look at their needs, their preferences, and then you can target them with uh, certain offers based on the data that you've gathered uh, from that particular customer base. So that's what personalization and segmentation really is all about. So that you're not just um, channeling your products randomly, blindly, without knowing where it's going to, to really fall and whether there is any impact at all that uh, it's likely to create. And, and personalization is really a buzzword in the in the marketing world and uh, all for a good reason because consumers expect tailored uh, experiences that resonate with their unique preferences and needs look at a company like starbucks mm -hmm. they have mastered personalization through uh, their mobile app which offers customized drink recommendations uh, and rewards based on individual purchase history. So they just look at your, and when I talk about they look at your purchase history, it doesn't mean that someone is looking at that. There are certain algorithms that have been put in place and they continuously pick uh, millions and millions of data about their customers every single day. And it's out of that that they're able to make certain decisions. So with AI-driven consumer analytics, 
we can now deliver personalization at scale by segmenting customers based on their behaviors, preferences, and, and all that. So we are able to craft very highly targeted marketing messages that drive engagement and conversion. Sometimes these companies send you messages such that you even end up thinking they know you personally, when in actual sense, they actually don't. The only way they, 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 they really know you is through the data that they have been able to gather from you, uh, just looking at the way you behave with their platforms. So now, coming to predictive analytics, and this is interesting. Um, I, I really find it interesting because predictive analytics, unlike just being able to describe the current situation of, or the current behavior of customers, in business analytics, you are still able to build certain models. Uh, and these models can be able to predict future behaviors of customers just by looking at historical data. And I'll give you an example. Company X, for example, wants to, to, to really optimize their marketing budget. So they probably they have been previously they have been using three channels to advertise. They have been using, say, YouTube, uh, newspapers, uh, and television, for example, for their advertisements, right? So predictive analytics comes in uh, where analysts are able to gather historical data uh, on the performance of these three platforms or this company, and then they're able to build certain models. And based on those models, the analysts are able to make predictions that say in the next five years, newspapers, for example, for that doesn't make sense, but I'm just using it as, uh, using it as an example. In the next five years, newspapers would be the most preferred channel of advertisements for your type of business. So it's able to really predict how customers will behave in future. That's what predictive analytics is all about. So it's, it's really a game changer for marketing professionals uh, because by utilizing historical data and machine learning algorithms, we are able to forecast future consumer behavior and market trends. Look at a company like Walmart. They use predictive analytics to, to, to optimize inventory levels, ensuring popular products are always available for customers. So with these predictive analytics models, Walmart is able to understand that product X usually sells the most and therefore at no given time should they run out of stock uh, for that particular product. And because of that, they make money, they really get uh, good revenues out of uh, such decisions, as opposed to probably maintaining the same uh, inventory levels for all products, yet certain products sell more. So it gets to a point where you as a consumer, for example, you walk into a supermarket or a Walmart to purchase something, and then you find out that it's not there. You both lose, as a, you, you become disappointed as a customer, but Walmart also loses because, uh, uh, because um, you have not bought from them, okay? So, so that's really how predictive analytics works in marketing. Um, uh, Mark, excuse me. Mark, excuse me. Thank you. Um, so I need you to just explain um, how, in the in the in the context of of uh, Walmart, mm -hmm. you are marketing analyst. So what is your role? What would be your role in determining uh, which product is 
is has high demand and at what at and and um, at any time it shouldn't get to lower to some certain inventory level. So you as 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 marketing analyst, what will be your role in the, in this in this case? So um assuming they probably have me as their consultant, I don't know. Uh, probably let, let's assume I'm working for them as a business analyst. So my role basically would be to, you know, all companies um, uh, keep databases of, of their historical uh, inventory levels, stock sales and all that, right? So as a business analyst, when I've been given such a task, what I need to do is to go into such databases pull it out, uh, play around with it, um, uh, try to make some sense out of it. And then, like I mentioned, we do a lot of models. There are linear models and that we develop as business analysts, but all this is dependent on the data that you give us, as, uh, for example, in this case, Walmart. So what I'll do, I'll get that data uh build models with that data uh so out of those models i'll be able to see which of these models really um, seems to optimize the inventory levels the best the, or the most or something like that and if, of course that's the recommendation that you give so now it's upon the people in charge of uh, managing the inventories really uh, either listen to you sometimes they don't uh, because anyways you're just giving them your recommendations they also have to make their own judgments but most of the time they listen to business analysts yeah uh, that makes sense because a predictive analytic depends uh, on historical data that's that's exactly what it is yeah but also i know there's pres uh, prescriptive analytics uh, which also explain the reason why. So I, I know uh, that's as business analysts, you definitely look at the historical data and being able to make sense out of it. But also uh, comes a case as marketing analyst, you work is more, you just mentioned something that, you, you know, the model will be, able to, will be able to look at your behavior or buying uh, activities and be able to see whatever you like so that they can be able to send you that. So that again, it, 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 it's, it's, um, is a, a thin line between marketing analyst and business analyst. Would you, if possible, explain what, what would make the difference between them or the role would be interchanged? Between marketing and uh, business analysts? Is that what you mean? Yes. I really think um, there is that there's a very thin line between the two. This, these two people basically do the, the same thing. The only difference probably would be that a marketing analyst is strictly looking at ways of optimizing marketing uh, strategies, right? But a business analyst would uh, go an extra mile beyond just looking at uh, optimizing uh, marketing strategies. So they would also be called upon, for example, to optimize. Um, production strategies uh, to help manage inventories. Those are things probably a marketing analyst might not be able to do. But I think they are more or less the same roles, if you are to ask me. OK. Yeah. So did I answer your question right? I'm good. Ah, okay. So, and, and I, you know, when you bring in such question, at least it helps to break the monotony of me just talking on and on and on. Sometimes it can be boring. So, but I hope you guys are really picking out something that uh, you can be able to even advise your seniors for those of you who are employed elsewhere or you are looking to get employed in. Uh, marketing departments, you can use some of this knowledge to, to really 
advise your seniors, sometimes they might not really understand some of this stuff because they focus on the bigger pictures in the, in the organization. So away from predictive analytics, we look at automation. I think this is pretty much simple. It's basically automating certain marketing tasks like um, automated sending out of email uh, communications and all that. So the essence of this is basically just to ensure that uh, people in charge of marketing departments can focus on more serious issues instead of uh, channeling a lot of their energies in uh, certain petty tasks, so to speak, of sending out communication. And the good thing with AI is that it can be able to personalize as much as, as much as possible. So if communication is going out, it can send out communication to millions and millions of people at the same time, but each person or each customer or each consumer receives their information or their communication in a personalized way. So in the simplest terms possible, that's all I can uh, say about uh, marketing automation. So I used the example of Salesforce. For those of you who know Salesforce, Salesforce is a CRM service provider. It provides, it provides um, customer relationship management software to other companies offering it as a software as a service. So they, they uh, personally I use Salesforce up to this point in time and I know how their platform works. They have a lot of automated tasks. So for example, you can just set out uh, certain functions to go out at certain times without you triggering anything. And that's, that's uh, one aspect of, um, so analytics simply comes in because it helps to really do the segmentation so that when the automation is happening, it's targeted in a way. So we are almost coming to the end and uh, after discussing all that, it's important that even though we, even as we, as we utilize these massive available databases that are, that are currently available, we have to be as ethical as possible. Remember here we are using people's data and if you use it wrongly, they, Consumers can simply sue you. And that's why you, you must have had cases of uh, Facebook and, and uh, other companies really being in the spotlight based on uh, issues to do with customer data. So even as we enjoy the benefits that come with using data to make uh, good decisions, for marketing, it's important that uh, we stick to the ethical standards that are required. We must be mindful of ethical considerations. So respect customer privacy and ensure transparent uh, data usage. Companies like Apple, I, I mentioned it at some point, uh, really take uh, privacy very, very, and I don't know what comes into your mind when you think about Apple. For me, when I think about an iPhone compared to any other phone, what comes into my mind before I even look at any other aspect of quality is data privacy. With Apple, you know very well that if it, it's very hard, for example, for someone to hack into, into your iPhone as compared to any other phone or your MacBook for that matter, right? And they have really perfected uh, the art of data privacy because they know that's where uh, their brand really gets value from. 
So moving forward, and this is just a conclusion, um, what you can take home is that the future of marketing is in artificial intelligence and data analytics. You can't run away from that. So it's important that uh, companies uh, think of exploring AI powered tools in their marketing strategies. Uh, by so doing, certain uh, people will lose their jobs, but certain jobs will also be created. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, so that's how I will wrap my session for today. I hope you picked one or two things that uh, can make you a better, a better person in this industry. So having said that, I'll open the floor for any questions if there are is before I can hand it over to the moderator. Any questions, if you have, you can just unmute and ask or... So if there are no questions, I think there are only two options or two conclusions that uh, either the presentation was very good or the presentation was the worst you've ever had. So I would challenge you guys to shoot in at least one question and then we can close the session. Okay, so- okay. If Hi. Yes, Can you hear me? Yeah, just go ahead, Bata. Uh, firstly, I think the presentation is very, very informative. Um, I guess a lot of people are into this space now. So as we get to understand what this is all about, then we have less and less questions. But it was a very informative session for me. And I was just looking at actually what I do. Uh, I work in the healthcare industry and we have a system where we order medicine for our residents. And what we've been doing is we've been doing something we call psychophil. And psychophil was becoming a nightmare because residents were missing medicine. Everybody assumed because psychophil has come, everything is there. We've now since changed it and it's as on need basis. It's a little bit more work for whoever is uh, on the floor or that day doing med medicine, because then you have to find what is at a certain level and then you have to order and you have to link it with what is on the order. So. To me, I think data is everywhere. Data is everywhere and it just that probably we didn't know that what it was, but now that I'm in this space, it's starting to make a lot of sense. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And good to learn that uh, you picked a thing or two. Thanks, Bata. So any other comments? Um, so if there is none, I'll probably just take this opportunity to thank all of you for creating time for this. I'll hand over to the moderator to take it from there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. I know, I know it's uh, past midnight. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear. Yeah, you. I know it's past midnight in Kentucky. Uh, thank you for again creating time to to be with us today. I believe that uh, you've really brought out the relationship between AI, data analytics, and real world scenario, like being in marketing. So you brought that clearly out. I think that is good. 
Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Um, I just need to talk brief about what we do. Uh, we are seven at, uh, as a company, we have currently about 16 students registered. And uh, we are starting a new class uh, from next week. Uh, you are invited uh, for those who are not students already. Please uh, go to our website, ask for this information we have. You'll be able to find more information about our classes. And uh, so we do anything tech, anything um, that is data driven. Uh, we do training on that. And we want to empower students. Um, our current students are really doing well. I'm happy. I'm so proud of them. And I, I look forward to many more of such uh, students getting um, getting into our class and living as professionals, uh, people with the expertise, people with the uh, good skills to go out there, <clears throat> to go out 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 there, uh, to use the skill that they have learned um, to make the world a better place. Uh, to solve real problems uh, which companies are facing outside there. And so that marks the end. Unless somebody has a question, uh, we will end. Anyone with a question? Is anyone with a question? Yeah. If none is with a question, I think a marker is um, a professional in business and analytics. And so we will be able to see him in future. Mark, thank you very much. Looking forward to having more engagement with you. Uh, good night, everyone. Good day, uh, those who are in Kenya and other places. Be blessed and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye.